everybody, Carla Nicole. So I'm at it again, right? <laughs> Good afternoon. It is live with Carla Nicole. And um, it's Sunday, right? It's a pretty, um, pretty calm day. I mean, it's not too cold. So, you know, I can appreciate that because sometimes I just don't want to deal with the the cold weather or the drama that it comes with so um i just wanted to um welcome everybody i am carla nicole i am a single mother of two i'm a wisdom coach and um today i want to talk about self-preservation all right so i want to welcome jennifer and paula thank you so much for joining me this afternoon Giving me 30 minutes of your time, I can't um, tell you um, enough how much it's appreciated, and I'm so glad you're here. And um, this is this this is you know the transformation series, um, and this series I've um, decided to design to really help implement how important it is to um, make sure that. Hey, Wayne, same to you, love. Happy holidays to you, too. Um, and I really want to implement how important it is that, um, you know, transforming our life is key. It's very important. Um, and we have more power, I think, than we give ourselves credit for. A lot of times we don't realize how much power we have, but we do. Um, so I just want to kind of give you guys a heads up on the importance behind making sure that you self-preserve, okay? So um, everybody on the call, like I said, um, giving me 30 minutes of your time, I, I don't take it lightly. I'm very, very happy that you are with me. But again, like I said, self-preservation is key to um, making sure that your life is... Um, really fulfilled and in order to be fulfilled we have to make sure that we pervert preserve ourselves so what does what self-preservation mean let's talk about that for a second self-preservation is something that we as individuals need to really think about um whenever we are on this planet um this is very important and the reason why I wanted to talk about this as far as um, with this series, why it's so important is because, you know, um, we have so many obligations. <laughs> we do. We have so many obligations and sometimes we have more obligations than really our hands can hold. But I want to talk about the various different obligations that we have in life. Number one, we have to... Make sure we have our housing. Hey, Saj. We got to make sure we have our housing. We got to make sure we have our our income coming in. We got to make sure that we have um, food to eat. We got a lot of stuff that we got to make sure of in order to be in great standing with how we're living. Period. Point blank. There's certain things we have to have to make sure that we ourselves are... Um, really sufficient okay but a lot of times i think we put ourselves on the back burner don't we i mean let's just talk about that for a second don't we put ourselves on the back burner for various reasons um we put ourselves on the back burner to um let's just talk about being in a relationship so we sacrifice self needs to make sure our mate or our significant person in our life has everything they need and then we are depleting ourselves to make sure our significant other or our, our partner or our mate or whomever we're in a relationship with, we make sure they have. But in the process of that, we ourselves are de depleting. We're feeling less than. We're not. We're just. We're just feeling like, man, I am exhausted. Literally, so many people they're exhausted and they're exhausted by energy. They're exhausted by effort. They're exhausted by just just overexerting themselves for everyone else and sacrificing self. So that's a part of why I want to talk about self-preservation because a lot of times we don't think about the fact that we sacrifice ourselves to make sure someone else is good, right? 
This is important. Number two, we also sacrifice, sometimes more than not, ourselves for our children. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Our children, right? We sacrifice ourselves. So what do we do as parents? We make sure our kids have everything they need, most of the time, everything they want, and then we are sacrificing ourselves. We don't have everything we need because we're making sure our kids have everything that they need, everything that they want. And then in the process, we're sacrificing ourselves. And we're even sacrificing our wellness. We're even sacrificing our mental state, our mental peace, our home environment. We're sacrificing everything for, for our children. Sometimes we're sacrificing everything for everybody else, but hinder making sure that our own needs are being met. We just don't think about that. The other thing we happen to sacrifice for is our aging parents, right? We have parents that have demands. Oh, I need you to come over here and do this. I need you to come over here and do that. So we're running back and forth to our parents, making sure they have everything they need. Everything they need is making sure, oh my God, I wanna make sure that my parents are taken care of. And that's beautiful. Get I get that because, of course, you know, without your parents doing everything for you, when you were growing up and becoming, you know, an adult, they did everything they could to sacrifice for you. So sometimes parents are so demanding. It's like, I don't have any time to take care of me because I'm running back and forth to take care of my mom or my aging dad or both my parents or whatever. So again, we're ripping and running. We're doing for other people. We're not focusing on what we need or what our needs truly are because we're focusing on someone else, right? So here's the other part we sacrifice for. We sacrifice for our jobs, right? We, we sometimes are at work more than we are at home. So what are we doing? We're not balancing out. Okay, I'm at work 12 hours out the day which means there's usually 18 waking hours of the day, which means only six of my hours, I'm at home, in my home, in my, in my domain. So you're at work 12 hours out of your waking hours of the day. And then you have no time for you. You have no time to really, I mean, my God, you pay rent every, every month, you pay your mortgage or whatever, but you're not home, you're at work. So again, I'm just talking about self-preservation because I really want y'all to get this. So a lot of times we're spending all this time at work, right? We got that great paycheck, right? We got that money, we got that OT on the check, but when you sit down and you really look at it, it's like, well, yeah, I got this paycheck coming in. I got this amazing amount, amount of money coming in, but I don't see my home. I don't see my family. I am working myself to the bone. I don't even get to really enjoy the fruits of my labor. I don't get to enjoy that because I'm so busy at work. So, okay. So um, the reason why I wanted to talk about self-preservation is because I had to have a conversation with myself. I don't tell you guys something that I didn't discuss with me. And like I say all the time, yeah, I'm a wisdom coach, but I, my first client was me. <laughs> I had to first learn how to talk, talk and deal with my own stuff. So if I'm telling y'all something, trust me, I had to have this conversation with myself. So I want to talk about, let's talk about work first, right? So for me... Um, I ended up changing my hours at my job. Now, granted, not everybody has that opportunity. And sometimes our, let's talk about this. Sometimes our lifestyle, okay, um, that we live in has a certain level that we want to live in. So say for instance, we have a, a high maintenance life or we have, we have a home that we, you know, is very expensive or whatever. We have a high car payment or whatever the demand is that has you at work so much to make sure you have that. Sometimes we got to sit back and say, well, is it worth this? Because I had to ask myself, hold on a minute. I work at my job, right? And at the time I was working at my job from like nine in the, in the morning and getting off is like six o'clock. And then I'm like, yeah, I work from home, 
but still I'm at work. And when I'm at work, I'm not, I'm not able to do my home duties. I'm not able to just be in the focus of what Carla Nicole needs. I'm always having to do something for my job to make sure my job obligations are being met. So my demands or what I'm having to do is based upon my job. So I had to sit back and look at that. And I'm like, hold on a minute. I have 18 waking hours of the day. And from 9 in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening, I am at work. Unacceptable. So I had to make a marginal decision. I call it an admin decision. I had to make a decision. Like, look, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my behind up early, which is what I did. I got up early. So I get up now at 530 and I go to work at 6 in the morning and I get off at 230. Now, if I choose to work overtime, which I usually do, I'm going to do a Saturday. Now, I'm going to do a Saturday from 6 in the morning to 11 in the morning. So the rest of my day is mine because I'm going to be damned. I'm working all these hours here at this job all day. And what in the end am I going to get at the end of this? I mean, before we, once I retire, what am I going to get in exchange for doing all this labor for this company? And I had to sit back and be like, ain't worth it. So I ended up saying, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some sacrifices. So I get up early and I have no problem with that. <laughs> Because as far as I'm concerned, getting up early allows me to have a whole full day of having other things I can do for myself. I don't have to be obligated to the job anymore from from six uh, from nine in the morning to six in the evening. I don't have to be obligated. So I changed it. And sometimes we have to have a conversation with ourselves and say, what do I want my life to look like? What is my self-preservation? I had to ask myself. What exactly am I doing while I'm laboring in this job? Sacrificing my peace, sacrificing my family time, sacrificing my entrepreneurial time, sacrificing my creativity, sacrificing all this other stuff for what, a job? No, absolutely not. So I made a change and I'm encouraging everybody else. If you're at, their, if you're at your job, 12 or 15, 16 hours a day for the fruits of your labor to not be enjoyed is unacceptable and it is not self-preserving. You are not preserving you. What you're doing is you're making sure that you have, what, the $170,000, $200,000 home. Sometimes you got to downsize to get your life back. It may not seem like, well, I want to, I want to be able to pull up and have a circular driveway. Okay, but you don't have no time in, in to be able to enjoy the circular driveway because you're at work to make sure that you have the circular driveway. That don't make no sense. Downsize. Sometimes we got to downsize and we got to have some harsh, real talks with ourselves and say, this is not working for me. I'm not going to sacrifice my peace. Let me tell you something. You can make a mansion out of any home. Just decorate it. <laughs> And when you decorate that home, it could be the fashion. It could be the most beautiful mansion you want it to be. It may only be $70,000 home, but hell, you're at home to enjoy it. Rather than having all this, I got to have a BMW. I got to have the, the newest, latest model of the BMW. For what? Get you a 2017 or get you a 2012 BMW if you got to have the Beamer. And have less of a payment. But you still have the Beamer you want. Because some of these cars, man. Why sacrifice all you have. All that time. To be able to say, I got this. Or I got that. Because you can't take it with you. Once we out of here, we're out of here. Can't take what we have possession wise with us. So we got to really look at. Okay, am I self-preserving my? Am I really? Am I, am I really gaining here? Or am I losing here? We got to start sitting back and asking ourselves, well, hell, I can make I can make a dis decent living, have a modest home, make some make some decoration changes, and let me tell you something. Have a home that I'm excited to come to changes the game for you. And so we have to stop thinking that we have to have all the latest stuff that is that is 
to your disadvantage because you get the latest stuff and I'm telling you now, I don't care what trend is going on, it's going to be a new one by next year or within six months or sometimes three months. So you going out here trying to chase the trend and you killing yourself. You at that job more than you're at home, but you're killing yourself, right? Is it worth it? You got to ask yourself. If it's not worth it, don't do it. Because like I said, I ended up making a sacrifice of getting up early. And hell, I love it. Because at the end of the day, when I get off work, I'm done with work. <laughs> and I can do what I want to do creatively. I can go and, and spend time with my kids. I can do what I need to do. And I have a whole eight hours that I'm actually able to enjoy my time of being out of work. Not having to do something that I need to do. And it changes everything when you get away oops, when you get away from having to sacrifice we got to get past always thinking we got to have the latest stuff because i'm going to tell you what all that stuff you're wanting to get you're spending all this money and all that stuff it don't mean a hill of beans because you're killing yourself at work what good is it going to do if your health is failing <laughs> you're not getting proper rest you don't even know what relaxation is. You haven't rested in your bed that you spent all this money to get. Got all this beautiful stuff, but you can't enjoy it because you're at work. Self-preservation, man. You got to sit back and you got to look at it. Is this costing me more than it should? If it is, you're not putting yourself first. Let me tell you something about healthy selfish. And I want to talk about this because I know a lot of people don't think about it. It is okay to be selfish. And there is a healthy kind of selfish. When you understand something, it's very important. We have to get out of thinking that when we care about ourselves, or when we start putting ourselves first, that we're wrong. We're not wrong. We're actually good doing something good and actually preserving ourselves. We got to get away from thinking, oh my God, I... You know, I should be changed. I should, I should challenge, you know, what I'm doing for me. No, you should be glad you're doing for you. Because doing for you is really going to imp import a newfound self-loving that you cannot imagine. When you get out of always thinking, well, you know, I got to do for this person and do for that person and put yourself last. It's just going to... It's going to make you miserable in the long run. And you're going to say, once you get to your retirement years or once you get done with all this ripping and running and taking care of other people, and you're going to get to a point where you sit back and say, but what have I done for myself? What have I done to really see inside me what it is I desire? What is it? What are my gifts? <laughs> what is it that I need? Sometimes we got demanding parents or children or mates to the point where we sacrifice everything we need and want for them and really don't have a don't even have a clue what it is we need and want. But it is okay to be like, hey, look, no. <laughs> With a period. Understand that. Sometimes we gotta stand on our no. We gotta learn that selfish. It's not a bad thing. Selfishness has to happen for us to make sure that we are able to be healthy. <laughs> what good are you if you're not able to take care of yourself? What kind of mother are you to your children if you're laid up sick because you're at work all the time trying to sacrifice everything you do for your kids? You're at the job 12, 13, 14 hours a day and you don't have no time for your children. What good are you for your kids? What example are you showing your kids? Have all these nice things, but don't get to enjoy it? That doesn't make any sense. We have to learn to balance. And when we balance, we learn how to teach our children to balance. And then the demanding parents. We got to learn. Listen, I love you. You are my parent. Yes, you took care of me. You've done everything for me. I appreciate everything you did for me. But I do have other things I must get done. So I'm a need for you to either seek other people to help you while I have my own demands to take care of. Or you're going to have to wait on, you know, maybe I can't run, rip and run and do take you to all of your 
your doctor's appointments or maybe I can't do everything that I, I'm always doing because I got stuff I got to do. I will pay for whatever, maybe Uber or something for you to get taken care of. But mom or dad or both, you guys are putting so much pressure on me that I can't get my own life together. I have to self-preserve. I'm not loving you less. I'm actually loving me more. And sometimes that's what we got to do. We got to sit down and say, hey, look, I can't, I can't sacrifice myself. I've got to learn to get over the fact that sometimes I got to sit back and say, hold on. This is not healthy for me. When we don't sit back and really pay attention to what it is that we do, and we're just doing and going and doing and going and ripping and running and not paying attention to our own needs and health, what happens is we find ourselves in a situation where uh, the health is going to fail on you. you. You being at that job every day and, and killing yourself for the job, I mean, then what? So you have all the things, but you don't have your peace. You don't have your health because you were at the job for 12 to 14 hours. You are laboring harder for someone else than yourself. We have got to stop thinking that we owe someone else for things that they've done for us. So again, if you have an elder parent or elder parents that are demanding and commanding you to do certain things, you have to start to sit back and look at your life and say, hmm, in order for me to have balance in my life, I need to see how I can arrange for this not to be such a lopsided um, agreement with my parents. I am under so much stress trying to make sure that they're taken care of that I'm lacking in my own self-care. And in order to do that, you got to step outside of it and say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to schedule I'm going to make a reso I'm going to make a resolution plan on how to make sure that I am still, you know, doing for them and caring for them and things of that nature, but I'm going to have to have some help. I mean, sometimes we got to sit back and look at the situation and say, you know, I just need some help or I need someone else to help me or talk to your siblings. Maybe your siblings can help you because a lot of times they see one sibling doing everything and they're like, oh, okay, so they don't need no help. No, I need help. I need you to help me with mom and dad to do this. Can you do this when I'm busy doing this? Because I have needs and wants that need to be taken care of too. It's okay to be, you know, selfish. It's okay. And matter of fact, it's really at this point, as we age, as we grow, as we do what we need to do, it's really essential that we sit back and say, um, I got to figure out what I need to do. See, a lot of times we don't think about our life being so short or where are we going to be at the next stage? Because we only think about, you know, high school, college, married. We don't think about retirement, though. <laughs> uh, hello? You are going to be a senior if you, if you are still around. So we need to be thinking about what progressive thing do I need to do to make sure in my senior years I'm not burdening my children or my spouse or my, or my parents. What am I doing to prepare for my senior years? A lot of times we don't want to talk about that though, right? We don't want to think about it, but it's inevitable. We're all going to age. We're all going to get older. We're all going to get 65 and up. So we need to be starting to think now, what is it we need to do to self-preserve? Because it's coming, whether we want it to come or not. So we need to sit down and really, like I said, really start thinking about what your needs are. Also, think about what your wants are. What do you want to see when you open your eyes to your senior years? What is it? What, what vision do you want to see? Something we want to start paying attention to now. Don't wait till you're 60 trying to hurry up and get everything done before you turn 65. Do it now while you're in your prime time. While you're 35, 40, 45. Start planning now on figuring out what you're going to do to self-preserve. And if, if somebody is 
costing you more than you're willing to pay? You don't have to just do everything and sacrifice for everybody else. It's time you speak up and it's time that you say something and say, hey, look, you know, I don't mind, you know, looking out for other people and doing for people, but I got to make sure that I'm okay. And I got to make sure that I'm needing and getting what I need because I'm not any good for anybody else if I'm not making sure that I myself am, am taken care of. We are no good to no one else. I'm going to say it again. No good to no one else if you're not self-preserving for you. I hope I helped somebody today. This is what I do. Transformation series. And also, if you guys are coming this evening, I will be doing um, a video chat called Centrally Speaking. And I will be doing a fruit demo showing about the female orgasm giving some details on that and how to um, learn about it and how to improve and, and, and learn about female anatomy and how we can improve our sex lives. Look, it's all about healing the planet. <laughs> In the midst of doing this, I'm really wanting everybody to understand that you've got to learn and get educated. So if you want to join me tonight, let me know. Inbox me or or like this video and I'll be sure to make sure I add you. Now how we do it is I call you from Facebook Messenger. And then we all jump on a visual call. We have a great time. We talk. Today I'm going to do a fruit demo. So I'm going to be using peaches to show you the female anatomy. And teaching some intricate information that we need to know about how to improve our intimacy and the female orgasm. It's not as mysterious as many people think it is. Also, if you are not already, I'm a need for you guys to become Wisdom Focus Group members because it's $9 a month. Being a member is one of the powerful things that I have. These video chats are very important. They actually educate. I have a heart and mind call chat that we talk about what's on our heart and mind. Education is very important to me and is key. If you're not a member of the Live with Carla Nicole group, be sure to request to be one so that you can get over there and get under my umbrella. Also, last but not least, I have a YouTube channel. If you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm going to need for y'all to do that today. I had, I, well, I went live yesterday <clears throat> talking about depriving the sex to your, to your partner. So, um, subscribe over there. It's under Carla Nicole. You can find my channel there. Also, if you have not already paid attention or you don't know yet, I have a course that is called Learn to Unlearn. A lot of us have, I don't know, we get in these ruts and we get in these, um, I don't know, just routine of life that we think that, you know, because we're adults, we don't have to learn anything. You know, we don't have to change. We are what we are because we are who we are. However, education and life should change every time we can we we should be able to learn and learn how to unlearn some things that are not healthy in our lives and um you can take that course right now it is already up and ready so if you want to be a part of that please make sure to let me know so again look i'm so glad you guys were here make sure you share this video someone needs to hear this a lot of people don't realize the the very importance of being selfish healthily and they don't really know the importance of transforming their life. It's not that hard. It's just that you have to be willing to do some changes. And doing them is not the hard part. It's just sticking to them. That's the hard part. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to make sure I, I speak on what um, Raphael said. He said um, he thinks the government should be involved in this matter because they give company older owners the mandate to rob people of their family quality time. I agree. Um, he said they should regulate uh, work patterns to help build a formidable family. I, family. I like that idea. He said, well, our work time defers for, for different countries. He says in Nigeria, people who work for private companies wake up to go to work for some people 4 a.m. and they get back home by 10 p.m. That is just too much. That is ridiculous. Oh, my God. He says so many families have have been made to rot because there's no family quality time. And again, this is why I talk about quality time with your family. Um, we just, we don't have it because we're so 
gung ho about having the greater things, the, the, the fabulous stuff. And that's fine, but what good is it if you can't enjoy it? So we really need to think about that. I hope I helped somebody today. Make sure you share this. All right, I'm out of here. This is Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.